Hey, good Tuesday morning. I had to think there for a second. Tuesday morning. Yeah, and it's foggy out. It's a foggy morning, as you can uh, as you can see behind me. Um, today, I want to I want to talk a little bit about who is Jesus for all of us. I mean, we just went through Easter, right? And uh, you know, we're still celebrating the resurrection. It's it's a part of our everyday life. But, you know, when you see Christians post on social media, when you see Christians out in the community, when you see Christians at the workplace or even at school, does the resurrection impact their life? I mean, does it really? Does it impact any of our lives? Well, I want to share a story from the, the Gospel of Mark, and this is when Jesus and his disciples... They were on the way to Caesarea Philippi. They were actually going through it. And he asked the question, who do people say that I am? In other words, Jesus is just asking opinions. Who do people say that I am? And, you know, again, they're just on the way to Caesarea Philippi, about a little over 100 miles from Jerusalem. And there's nothing about the cross. There's nothing up to this point. And so Jesus just wants to know, hey, what are people saying about me on the streets? And so, listen to this. They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. So so this is who they say you are, right? Um, In Mark chapter 1, verse 1, we we get the, the word Christ, Christos, Greek, there in the very beginning of Mark 1.1. 1, 1. Um, other titles up to this point, the Son of Man, Son of God, Holy One of God. Jesus has been called Teacher. But here when Jesus asks the question, who do people say that I am? They hear that he is seen as one of the prophets. Why? Because Jesus in the Gospel of Mark teaches as one who has authority, power and authority. So, so then, listen to what happens. Peter answered, well, actually, next, they replied, uh, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. So, and then Jesus takes it to another level. He doesn't want the opinion anymore. And he asked plainly, but what about you? He asked, who do you say that I am? Now, this, this sounds like a trick question, but it isn't. Because they've been with Jesus, they've heard his teaching, they've heard his, I mean, they've watched him heal the sick, and they saw the things that he did, and they watched how people came to him, because they needed healed, they needed to hear the word. And so, finally, Peter answered, you are the Messiah, you are the Messiah. And and this is, this is... Sounds good on a level, right? I mean, because Peter does. He confesses, you are the Messiah. But, you know, Jesus, I mean, this is confession, right? He, but, but Jesus wants more than that. Because he understands that when Peter says this, it sounds good. It sounds really good. But does Peter really believe that? Does Peter really believe that? Does P, is Peter's expectations of the Messiah differed than what the Messiah's responsibility and what the Messiah's role is going to be. Listen to what happens next. Well, Jesus warned them not to tell anyone. But, but then look at uh, verse 31. This is Mark chapter 8, verse 31. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law. He must be killed, and after three days be, he would rise again. He spoke plain about this. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Peter rebuked Jesus. But, but then Jesus turned and looked at his disciples. He rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You do not have the mind. You don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. So this exchange is like really powerful because Peter just confessed that Jesus is the Messiah. I mean, that's Mark chapter 8, verse 29. Peter says that you are the Messiah. But then 
next in verse 31 and, and following the verse 33, you have this conversation between Jesus and, and his disciples. And he tells plainly, his, he tells his disciples. Okay, so Peter just confessed that I am the Messiah. But, but here's the rest of the story. The Messiah must suffer many things. The, the Messiah must be rejected. The Messiah is going to be killed. The Messiah is going to be resurrected. And, and so if you're going to believe that I'm the Messiah, I mean, this is what Jesus is basically saying to his disciples. Then you, then you need to know what the Messiah's role is going to be. Because everybody had an opinion about who Jesus was. Jesus asked that at the very beginning. Who do people say that I am? And then he, he knocks it down to what the disciples believe. Who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah. Then Jesus goes, you know what? Well, the Messiah is going to suffer many things. He's going to be rejected. He's going to be killed. He's going to be resurrected. And Peter's like, you know, Lord, no, no, it's not going to happen. You know, it can't, it can't happen. And, uh, and, and then Jesus turned and looked at his disciples. He rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Uh, it's actually Satan, Satan, Hebrew. And, and what, what that word means, you know, we, we think of a person with a little red and fiery and pitchfork and horns. Um, but when you see it used in Hebrew in, in the Bible, it it's means uh, an adversary or opponent. That, that's what it means, adversary or opponent. And the reason why Jesus called Peter Satan is because Jesus didn't conform to Peter's expectations of Messiah. I mean, he didn't conform. And, and that's the thing. God doesn't conform to our thoughts, our beliefs. And, and when, G, when Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, well, Peter's expectations of Messiah was different than what Jesus said the Messiah was going to do. Messiah was going to suffer many things. He was going to be rejected. He was going to be killed. He was going to be resurrected. And so, what are your expectations? I started that out asking the question about, do, do we believe the resurrection? Do we believe that Jesus is the Messiah? Do we believe that Jesus is the Christ? And if we do, then we're going to follow His teaching. We're going to make our community a better place. And that's the thing. You know, most churches, it's, it's about themselves. If you don't believe me, well, never. I'm not going there. But yeah, most churches, it's about themselves. And, and it's time for followers of Jesus to do what Jesus said. Get outside. Get outside the walls. Get outside the building. And, and let's show the world that Jesus is the Messiah. Let's show the world that Jesus is the Christ. And let's show the world by the way He changes our lives. Yeah, by the way He changes us. Jesus is, is alive. He is the Messiah. He did suffer many things. He was rejected. He was killed. And you know what? He was resurrected and He lives. And He lives in my heart. I hope and pray that He lives in your heart. This is Pastor Bill from St. Luke's United Methodist Church, Harrisville, West Virginia, Ritchie County, West Virginia, on a foggy Tuesday morning. Hope and pray that you have a great day. I hope, uh, I think the sun's going to come out. It's going to be a nice day, but uh, right now it's cool. So wherever you are, have a great day. Hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, and I hope you're safe. God bless each and every one of you.